All right, who's ready for a mind-numbingly boring topic? Yes, you? Good, because today we're gonna to be talking about backups. Now, how many of you have had to reinstall OBS or reinstall Windows? Think about the last time that you had to redo all of your settings or recreate all of your scenes because you were trying to follow one of my videos and then I gave you the wrong instructions and then your computer just spontaneously exploded and ruined your life. I'm gonna show you guys a really easy way to back up your entire OBS install. We're talking all your settings, all your scenes, every plugin, even all the images and video files that you've added to OBS, everything will get backed up. And it's as easy as this. You double click one script, you wait a couple minutes, and then boom, you've just taken a snapshot of your entire OBS install and it's saved to a single zip file that you can just unzip to recover all of your settings. Even better, you can take your OBS folder and throw it onto Google Drive and have it constantly synced to the cloud so you don't even have to think about it. This has saved me more times than I can count. In fact, it saved me just last month when my settings corrupted itself in the middle of my stream and I was able to go to Google Drive, download an older version of my settings, and then be up and running in like five minutes. Let's just download version 100, which was backed up today, Friday at 3.36 p.m. The last thing you wanna do is spend days, weeks, months working on the perfect stream design and just losing everything because you didn't back anything up. So I'm gonna show you how to set up all of that right after this useless transition thing. I don't know, just start the video. Attention! Attention citizens! Sorry. I'm filming this part of the video after I've already filmed the video and I'm getting tired, I just don't want to go to bed. Anyway, this video is sponsored by Nerd or Die. Nerd or Die is a place where you can get graphics, overlays, panels, all sorts of graphics. I already said that part. All sorts of graphics for Okay, like, this is terrible. We're gonna keep going with this. No, it's gonna be the best sponsorship ever. <laughs> you get graphics for your stream. Yes, you definitely get those. They just released their newest design called Flatpak. You guys know me, I've been loving that minimal design aesthetic lately, and Flatpak is very minimal. I really like this sleek donation bar with those subtle animations. Plus, you can customize all the colors to fit your branding. It's great. Every Nerd or Die overlay is super easy to install. It's just a one-click process that supports OBS Studio and Streamlabs desktop. So check out Nerd or Die and use the code NUTTY at checkout to get 15% off. And that code works for the entire website. Okay, so let's talk about how this backup system works. So the first step is to run OBS in portable mode. What is portable mode? Well, portable mode basically tells OBS to put all your settings like your scene layouts and your encoder settings into the same folder that OBS is installed. Normally all of the files for the OBS program itself are stored on an entirely separate part of your hard drive to where your settings and your scenes are located. But if you enable portable mode, all of your settings will be saved in the same location as OBS itself. That means you can move your entire OBS folder to another part of your computer, you can throw it into another hard drive, you can even throw it onto a USB stick, and all of your settings will come along with it. And the only thing you need to do to enable portable mode is to go to where your OBS is installed and create a new text file called OBS portable mode.txt. You don't actually have to put anything in the text file. I just decided to put the lyrics to the Australian opening for Naruto in there because I think it's a great song. Sasuke is really cool. But you can leave it empty. Now the next time that you open OBS, it'll look like all your settings are gone. It looks like a brand new install. And that's because OBS is looking for your settings in a totally different folder to where they used to be stored. And you'll actually see that if you go to your OBS folder, there'll be a new folder that says config. This is where all of your scenes and your settings will be stored from now on. So to recover your scenes and settings, you just need to go to where OBS normally stores them. I'll leave that on screen right now. Copy this folder and put it into this new config folder. And hopefully when you next open up OBS, all your settings should be back to normal. If they're not there, so do you guys see where I'm going with this? If you wanted to create a snapshot of your entire OBS install, then you just need to back up that OBS folder because that OBS folder includes all your installation files and all your plugins, as well as all of your scenes and all your settings. And the quickest way to take a snapshot is just to right click your OBS folder, click send to compressed zip file, and then save that to wherever you want. So the next time that you need to recover your OBS settings, 
you just unzip that zip file. I just wanted to make the process a little more automated for myself. So I made this nice little script that when I execute it, it automatically zips the folder for me. And then it also leaves a nice little timestamp at the start. So I know the exact date and time that I made the snapshot. If you want the script, you can get it from the discord server. I'll leave that link down below. The download will include a zip file that has a couple other scripts that we'll talk about in a second, but you basically just unzip that inside of your OBS folder. And then if you want to create a backup, you just double click on the create backup script. Just make sure to edit this script by right clicking and clicking on edits and change the first line here that has your backup directory. This will be where your backups get saved to. It's going to go ahead and start zipping up your OBS folder. If it doesn't work, make sure that you have 7-zip installed because the script relies on using 7-zip. So I'll leave a link to that down below as well. Just in case you're a nerd and you're curious about what the script actually does. First of all, <laughs> what a nerd. <laughs> Geek. <laughs> Four eyes. <laughs> anyway, back to making software tutorials on the internet. These first few lines just delete a bunch of cache files and log files to save you some space in your backup because these folders can actually get pretty big and take up a lot of space. And the second part is where it actually zips up your OBS folder. If you want, I also included a separate cleanup script that just clears the cache folders. That's going to be really useful for anyone that wants to put their OBS folder onto Google Drive because you don't really want your cache files being synced to the cloud and wasting Google Drive space. Okay, so, so far we've backed up our entire OBS install, all our plugins, all our scenes, and all our settings. But what about the images and videos that we use for building up all of our scenes? You're probably using a bunch of image sources and media sources that are stored all over your computer that aren't getting backed up by our backup script. My way of solving this was to simply just create an assets folder inside of my OBS folder. And then any image files and video files that I use for my scene collections, I just move them into this asset folder. So that way, when I run my backup script, that assets folder also comes along with it. The only thing you need to keep in mind is that the next time that you open up OBS, it's gonna complain because it doesn't know that you moved your image files and video files. So it's gonna open up this missing files window. If you don't see it, just click on scene collection and check for missing files. It's gonna list all of the files that OBS can't find and you simply just need to relink them to the new location inside of that assets folder and then OBS will just take care of the rest. But before you do that, I have something really cool to show you, especially if you're one of the nerds I was talking about earlier. Okay, Norman. Let me introduce you to a feature in Windows called Junctions. Now, shout out to Mushies on the Discord server. He was actually the one that gave me this idea in the first place. Think of a junction kind of like a shortcut to another folder in Windows, but it's better than a shortcut because you can actually tell OBS that all your images and all your videos are stored inside of this shortcut junction directory, even though the video files themselves might be stored on a completely separate location on your computer. Look, I know that sounded super confusing, but trust me, just try to follow along and I promise you it will make sense. One of the scripts that I included in the download zip earlier is a create link script. If you right click that script and run it as administrator, it's going to create a link to your OBS folder on your C drive and then open up that junction directory. You should now have two folders open that look like they have exactly the same files in them. The only difference is that the two file paths for both of them are completely different. One of them is gonna be the file path of your actual OBS install, and the other one is gonna be the file path for that shortcut junction directory. They're actually exactly the same folder, and you can tell because if you add a new file inside of your OBS folder, it's also going to appear inside of that junction directory. Okay, so why does any of this matter? You just get to the fucking point already. If you go into OBS and then you relink all of your missing files, to the assets folder inside of the junction directory and not your OBS directory. Then the next time that you move your OBS folder to another hard drive or to another folder, you don't need to go through the whole missing files thing inside of OBS. All you need to do is to rerun that create link script that's going to create a new link to the new location of OBS. And then as far as OBS is concerned, none of your image files or none of your video files moved anywhere at all because it's all referenced to that junction directory. I feel like I said a lot of words just then, but I like if it helps one person out there, I'll be happy, okay? Personally, this has saved me a lot of headache because even though the missing files window inside of OBS is really cool, there are certain files that it doesn't work with. For example, filters and shaders, 
it doesn't detect if those files have moved at all. If you use junction directories, every time that you move your OBS folder, you just need to rerun one script and everything will be perfectly okay. You don't need to worry at all. But um, that's a little bit more advanced and I understand that some of you may not have got that. So uh, if the past three minutes didn't make any sense to you, just use the missing files thing inside of OBS and then be done with it, okay? All right, cool, great. All right, guys, you got any questions? Pop in the comments down below. Uh, I'm probably not gonna read them, but they make me look like a famous influencer. You can also join the Discord and catch my live streams. I stream three nights a week over on Twitch where we talk all about this kind of stuff. Other than that, you guys have a great week and I will see you guys, um, I say next week, but let's be real, probably be like a month from now. Anyway, I'll see you guys next time.